Hi there. So this month we'll go, we'll do a quick uh, overview, uh, let's say a small exercise uh, with, with the Beam Workbench of FreeCAD. A little bit like a uh, getting started exercise to show you quickly how, how it works and how to build a, a, small, a small building with, <coughs> with, with FreeCAD. Uh, so this is FreeCAD as I just installed it. Uh, this is the latest uh, 0.18 development version that you can get from directly from GitHub. I will put the link in the com in the comments. Uh, and this is the new start page that we just uh, that has been just merged last month. Um, so the first thing to do uh, when you install FreeCAD, if you are going to work with BIM, is to install the BIM Workbench, since the BIM Workbench is not bundled by default in FreeCAD. You can use Arch Workbench, which is at the moment quite similar, but the whole idea is to make the BIM Workbench more user-friendly, so I would advise you to uh, install it. Um, we can say yes to this message that warns you that uh, this is not, uh, this is outside of FreeCAD. We locate the BIM Workbench and just press the install button to install it. We need to restart FreeCAD. And now we have our Bing Workbench. If I switch to the Bing Workbench, I will get this message here that um, tells you a little bit about the Bing Workbench. And in the future, we'll have an in-game tutorial that will work a little bit like uh, in games where the tutorial is really actually the first steps of, of the game. We'll try to do something similar here. When you click OK, you have this uh, quick setup screen where you can set a couple of options for the Beam Workbench, which are actually a generic uh, options of FreeCAD, uh, just a part of it. So I'm going to work in centimeters. I want zero. Let's say two, I'm working meters and say two decimals. Uh, one grid square should be uh, 10 centimeters. And I want one big uh, grid line every meter. The rest of the things I will let the way it is. Open a new document started. Okay. So now I will open new document, file, new and close the start page since I um, won't be using it. You can see that we now have uh, this new uh, navigation cube, which is pretty cool. Uh, and here you have the mouse navigation style. I will use the gesture, which is my favorite. Um, and then the first thing to do is to set a working plane. So basically in um, in BIM everything you do, uh, most of what you do uh, depends on this uh, working plane. Um, basically this is where you will draw your 2D objects and where the, the base of all your BIM objects will be uh, located. So when I go here and I say uh, and I use this top I'm having my plane in the ground plane, which is the X, Y axis, which is basically a horizontal plane on level zero. So if I draw stuff here, let's draw some walls here. I'm drawing my walls on the, on the ground plane. Let's draw a column. Another one, these two columns have one meter high. I will set them to three meters high. And 20 centimeter width and height. So they have the same width as my wall here. So I know I drew one wall here and two columns. 
I'd like to draw a beam on top of this, for example. So I could draw a beam on the ground here by taking the beam, but go into beam mode. I will already switch my width to 20 centimeters, my heat height 20 centimeters, and simply draw a beam here, and then move it. I have to check first that. Uh, where are our snap tools? The screen is a little bit too small. Uh, this snap location here uh, means that every point I will snap will be on on the working plane. So if I use if I have this button checked, I won't be able to snap to this location up there which is above the working plane right so i need to uncheck it if i want to move this beam up there so now i can use the move tool here from this point to this point all right it needs to be 10 centimeters bigger which is not a problem, we'll change it here. And we move it to the right location. Right? Instead of this, I will hide it. I could have done it another way, which is place the working plane here above, which is easy to do simply by clicking, selecting a face and then pressing this button the working plane button and then the working plane goes automatically to where uh, to the face you, you selected and now I can again do a beam going beam mode 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters and I will go from here to here I need to move it from here to here. So you always have several ways to, to draw these things. Another way to do, to do it, uh, since in FreeCAD uh, you don't have difference between columns and beams. They are all structural elements. You decide which one is a column and one, what, which one is a beam. And you can change uh, afterwards. So I could also, I will hide this one. I could also have done it like this. Do a column, place it here. You see that it started on my working plane. And then set its height to two, two meters point 0.4, length to 20 centimeters width. 20 centimeters. And now I should rotate it into place. To rotate things, uh, I should take a working plane that will allow me to rotate. For example, this one. And this one I want to stick to the working plane because I don't want to rotate outside the working plane. Uh, and I take, can take this one and press the rotate button. Select start point. Uh, reference angle and the new angle. If I press the shift key, I'm like uh, constraining horizontally and vertically, which is quite useful in this case. After that, I can just move it into place with the move button. From this point to this point. And we can set our working plane back to top view like this. And then we can just start duplicating things. For example, I will duplicate these things here. 
I have several ways to duplicate things. As I explained in another video, I can copy things or I can clone things. In this case, I'm gonna, I'm gonna clone. From this point to this point. Okay, so I have now two walls. You see by this icon here, which one are duplicated, well, are clones, sorry. So let's finish the things. Let's add a couple of more walls here. I'll start it here. Only I want it aligned left. You see that my working plane button is pressed. So when I click here, even if I'm snapping above to the top point of the beam, I will actually be snapping on the working plane. So it's always interesting to know when you need to use this button or not. You see that my wall is correct. And another wall. On this point, this one I want aligned right to this point. Right. Then let's add here a window, for example. I will add my window. I will add it here and then move it to the correct location. That will be easier. Let's move it from this point to half a meter this way. And then I will move it up. For that, I will use this face to place my working plane. And then I can move easily move this up one meter, for example, from this point to this point. So you see, this working plane is, is really useful when you use these uh, draft tools. Uh, because depending on where it is, uh, you always have a reference where, where you, you're working. So, um, all the time you act actually um, move this working plane to where you need it. Uh, so, we al already have a lot of stuff here. Let's make a floor or a story, building story with it, uh, which is now in version 0 018. Um, one single object, which is this building part object that actually is used to create, um, here it is, and it is actually used to create kinds of groupings of objects. You can use it as a group, just to group objects. Right? And you can also change its, um, its role to building story, but then it just behaves as a building story. Uh, you can ch even change its role to building, and then it behaves as a building. It's the same object, but it has a couple of different uh, properties. Um, I will let it to building story. I'm going to do a little bit of cleaning on our model now. Um, because you see that that's the, we added a couple of objects already, and we already begin to have lots of objects here, which uh, are not so clear anymore which one is which one. So we definitely need to to do a bit of cleaning here. Uh, so what I'm going to do actually is um, to rename some of the objects, change their um, their IFC role which is how they are exported to IFC, and also group, group things up. So I will create, for example, a walls group. Move my walls to the walls group and put the walls group inside the building part. I'm going to create a new one for beams and move these two. You see that they are hard to identify in this list because they have the same name as the others. I could 
rename them or put them in different groups. There are several ways to organize your your um, your model. In this case, I will do both. I will take these two here and in the that in data change their label to beam. The label is the name uh, <coughs> under which they appear in in this in this view here. Each object in FreeCAD has an internal name, which is what you see here, and a visible name, which is its label, which is here. Uh, the difference is that the internal name is unique, uh, so it works a little bit like an ID. Uh, you cannot change it after the object is created, uh, and you are sure that there is only one object with that name in a, in a given document. Uh, the label, on the other hand, if you enable the, that option in the preferences. Uh, you can have several objects with the same name in the document. I didn't enable that option. That's why the second beam got created with the name beam 001. Uh, I will also change the, oh, okay, their IF0 is already on beam. And our columns here All right, two of them uh, were my experiments here. I will remove them. So we are left with four columns, right? So let's change their label to column. Let's change their, okay, their RC role is already in column. So let's create a group, columns. In place our group here. All right, now we have something quite organized. Um, I will rename this as ground floor, ground floor, and let's start adding another floor. So this works quite simply actually. We'll do just the same. I will place my working plane here, and let's add, for example, a slab here. We could make these two walls a little bit higher, right? right this is better. Save your file at some point. It's always a good idea. And then we have our working plane here above. Um, we can now add a new level. Let's start with a rectangle here. And make a slab out of it. So you can, uh, as I explained in another video, you can use these beam tools as standalone or you can uh, use them uh, by, with a selected 2D object. And then if you have a selected 2D profile, um, that profile will be used by, by that object. So here we're gonna make a slab. So its height is only, will be, let's say, 20 centimeters. And its IF0 should be slab. All right, I will rename it already. Now let's place our working plane on top of the slab, right? And make some new walls. I want it aligned left. All right. I'm going to clone this wall from here to here. All right. And then more walls from here. And then line no, right to here. Oops. 
All right. This wall got included in this one. Um, so I must edit this one and remove this addition. All right. So let's clone this wall as well. Clone from here to here. And finally, let's add a new slab on top of this. Let's place our working plane here and create a rectangle and make a new slab out of our rectangle. Let's make it also 20 centimeters height and change its roll to slab. Okay. So we need to now to make another floor object. This one will be called upper floor. And we just add, uh, let's rename this as slab. Let's make a couple of groups. One for the walls. One for the slabs. So these two slabs go into the slabs. These four walls go into the walls and the two groups go inside the upper floor right now we have quite a nice building structure which is clear which is well organized and and everything let's save it now what i will do here is uh, to place marks for these two uh, these two floors if uh, you change the drawing style here to wireframe These two objects, if you go in the view properties, they have a mark at their origin. Probably this is very small. All right, now it's more visible. So at the moment, both are at position zero, zero. The upper floor, I'm gonna change its location to here which is the level of uh, no three meters in four which is above the slab that we placed here um, as, as you see when i move the position of the level the contents of the level don't change, only the mark uh, which indicates the origin of, of a level. Uh, but I can change that if I select the objects which are inside my level. They have a property here that's move with hosts. And it's set to false, means if the host moves, they won't move together. If I change this to true, now I can take this object and move it, and the contents will move together. So let's go back to our flatlines mode. Now I can make uh, a couple of views of these. Um, of this building. Let's uh, create a third building part, which I will set as a building. Let's call it tower. And I can just place my two levels inside it. This one I forgot to set it as a building story. 
All right. So now I can add some cut planes, which we will use to make uh, views like uh, elevations and sections and plan views as well. Basically, I can select an object and use this button to create a section plane object. By default, this is located um, at the center of the object that you selected. If you double click it, you will see what object it, uh, it, it is viewing. Uh, it, won't view, it won't see the objects that are not here. So uh, basically, if you, had, if you had your building here, uh, this section plane will only consider that building. Um, so I will place it a little bit lower because now it's cutting right in the middle of my slab. I would like it to cut a little bit lower. So I'm going to place my work plane in front view so I can move my section plane, let's say, to here. So it will cut through the window. Right? Now we have to change to another workbench which is tech door workbench and the tech door workbench uh, is used to make uh, 2d views um, of uh, of your model so um, we can add in this page i select this page or say i select this section and i can add a section view here it is very large, so I'll we'll change its scale here. Let's say this is not enough. Do five. All right. Now we have a nice plan view of our building. Um, let's make it even smaller let's make another section view we have to go back to bim workbench select our tower object create section plane object this time it's here it goes automatically in the plane of your current working plane and we can resize it automatically to encompass the object the, this is purely visual. Um, the, the, what's gonna go on the page is the content here. It doesn't. It's not clipped by the size of of your section plane yet. Um, so here we do the same. We go back to tech draw and we place a view here, and we give it the same scale. We need to rotate it. No, minus 90. Right. Then we have a section here. Oh, you see that, and you see now that our window made a hole up to the other side here. Uh, we can change that easily. Select our window, go to selection so it appears here in, in the view. And, oh, of course, you know why? Because this wall is a clone of this wall. So when this wall got uh, hauled by the window, its clone got ho a hole as well. So we're going to fix that. I'm going to delete this clone wall. Go back to Bing. I will hide my upper floor because otherwise it's difficult to see anything. I'm gonna hide this beam as well. Hiding is simply uh, done by either by pressing the space key or here, uh, hide selection. So I'm gonna place my working plane top view again. Make sure I have the uh, working plane button 
pressed and make a new row from this point to this point all right yes we just need to include it in the correct group which is in this group here right our model is fixed So I'm also going to make an uh, elevation view. To this I will simply duplicate this section plane. I did simply a uh, copy-paste operation. And I move this second one outside of the building. So I'm going to go on this page again and do the same. Take the row and insert a new view. This view, uh, this view will need the same scale as the others. And rotation minus ninety. In the next video, I will show you how to put uh, annotation and dimension on these things. Uh, at the moment, if you use uh, this arch section plane, you cannot use the textual dimension tools yet. Uh, so you have to use um, these dimensioning tools here and put your dimension inside the, the drawing itself. And then you can add your dimension to the section here. Uh, but it's also possible already to do it entirely in text row and then you can add dimensions here. I will show that in, uh, in the next video, uh, next month. Uh, one last thing we might want to do here, basically is export this model to other BIM applications. I will gonna hide all the things I'm not using here. And I will simply export this tower object. Um, to have IFC export enabled, uh, you need another piece of software which is called IFC OpenShell. Uh, on Linux and Mac, you need to obtain it yourself from the IFC OpenShell website. And on Windows, it is bundled already inside the FreeCAD package. So if you install FreeCAD, you already have IFC um, import and export on Windows. Uh, so all you need to do here is to select the object you wish to export. Um, make sure all the IP roll of all the objects are the way you want. You can check that by using uh, this Beam Elements Manager in the Beam Workbench. Then you can check that all your objects are exported as, as you want. And then simply file, export, and um, given a file name and choose IFC. If you want fine control uh, over the export process, which can be useful, you can open the report view here. And then in the preferences, in import export and IFC, uh, if you press this show debug messages, now if I export again, test, replace, yes, and you see here every object being exported. And what happens? How it is exported? If it's exported as an extrusion, a birette, uh, which is basically a faceted object, or if it's a clone of another shape. Um, this is pretty useful to make sure uh, all of your objects are exported. Uh, you see that some of them have no shape, which is correct. Um, but you can check that everything is there here. Uh, it's pretty useful. And then we can just open our test file in an IFC viewer.
and we can make sure here that everything is there as as we want it. This IFC file can also be imported in other Beam applications like uh, Revit or um, or ArchiCAD. So I think that, that's it for for today. I'm gonna put this example file online as well, so you can have a look for for yourself. And uh, well, I hope this is use this was useful. And um, next time, let's uh, work a little bit more on on the page and uh, see what we can do to add dimension annotations and to produce uh, nice output drawings uh, from this. Um, so that's it, bye, see you, see you next month.